Welcome to Food Tech Mitra. In today's video, we are going to discuss about moisture content in wet and dry basis. So moisture content, it is the amount or quantity of water present in any food material. Hope you can very well distinguish between a fresh tomato and a dry tomato. Similarly, green peas and other dried pulses. Yes, it is the moisture content that makes the vast difference in both the products. Normally, moisture content is represented in two ways, wet basis and dry basis. Wet basis moisture content. So wet basis moisture content is the mass of water vapor per unit mass of moist sample. That is the mass of water divided by the mass of total sample. For example, let us consider this as a whole mass of sample which consists of moisture and a dry matter. Here the terms dry matter or solid contents or bone dry matter are all same. Okay. So Calculation of moisture content in wet basis is given as the mass of this moisture portion divided by the mass of the whole portion that is the mass of moisture portion plus the dry matter portion. Okay. Next is dry basis moisture content. So moisture content in dry basis is the mass of water per unit mass of dry matter of the sample. For example, consider um, the same whole mass of a sample as earlier then the moisture content in dry basis is calculated as mass of this moisture portion divided by the mass of this dry matter. So the denominator portion differs in both the moisture content representation. Let us see the relation between wet and dry basis moisture content. Once if you understand the relation then it will be easy for you to convert the wet basis to dry basis and vice versa and no need to memorize the equation if you understand this relation. Let us take moisture content in wet basis. So this denominator is total mass of the sample so uh, which can be written as mass of ma water plus mass of dry matter right. So moisture content in wet basis is equal to mass of water divided by mass of water plus mass of dry matter. So the denominator is also called as the mass of total sample. Okay. So now you divide the numerator and denominator by mass of dry matter. So in such case you will get the equation like this. So this can be written in terms of moisture content in wet basis is equal to mass of water divided by mass of dry matter whole thing divided by mass of water by mass of dry matter plus 1 okay so this can be written as you just see this numerator the mass of water by mass of dry matter which means moisture content in dry basis so the equation becomes moisture content in wet basis is equal to moisture content in dry basis divided by moisture content in dry basis plus 1 Okay. Similarly, in order to convert uh, wet basis moisture content uh, to dry basis, we will be using moisture content in dry basis is equal to moisture content in wet basis divided by 1 minus moisture content in wet basis. Okay. So, in the above equation, the terms of decimal, okay, it is given in decimal and the moisture content is expressed in decimal. If you are using the first set of equation for conversion, but you have moisture content in percentage, do not forget to convert to decimal and use this set of equation, okay. Or else you can use the set of equations on the right side which is expressed in terms of percentage itself, okay. Do you know why moisture content is important in food processing and preservation? Come, let us see, okay. So the major reasons are one is food quality, microbial stability, shelf life of food products, economic importance, legal and labeling requirements. Okay. So let us see about all these uh, topics. Okay. The moisture content of any food product affects the physical and chemical aspects of the food which relates to the freshness of the product. It has a direct impact on the product quality such as taste, texture, appearance, shape and weight. For example, if we take a green leafy vegetable or a fresh mint leaves, the moisture content gives the fresh appearance to the product. The product looks wilted if the moisture content is lost. In order to maintain the same quality throughout, consistency in moisture content should be ensured. Similarly, for example, excess moisture in some product may cause food material to agglomerate or become trapped in product 
production pipeline or get stuck to the walls of the equipment. The best example is coffee powder. Thus, moisture content is necessary in order to predict the behavior of foods during processing. Also, moisture content has a high impact on the shelf life of the product. In simpler term, shelf life of the food is inversely proportional to the moisture content of the product. Foods with high moisture content has a less shelf life and vice versa. For example, let us take tomato and dry tomato or tomato powder. So tomato contains about 90 to 95% of moisture in it. We cannot store fresh tomato as such for a longer period as the presence of higher moisture content may harbor the growth of microbes. Whereas the same tomato when it is dried its moisture content reduces approximately to 8 to 10 percentage. As the moisture content is less, microbes cannot thrive this environment and relatively higher shelf life can be obtained. Let me give you an example how moisture content is important during legal and labeling requirement. For example, if we take uh, milk powder, the legal standard of moisture content in milk powder should not be more than 5%. Likewise, for cheese, the moisture content should not be more than 40%. So in this way, it is important in order to maintain the prescribed standards. And similarly, when it comes to economic importance, the price of many foods depends on the quantity of water they contain. Water being an inexpensive and readily available ingredient, manufacturers often try to incorporate as much as possible in food without exceeding the legal requirement. Hence, it is important for the food scientists and manufacturers to be able to reliably measure moisture content. Thanks for watching my channel. If you like the video, kindly comment and share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe.